Okay, come on. Let's do this. Are you struggling to perform a pistol squat? Maybe it's your mobility. Let's dive into it. Prehab, welcome back to the channel. Dr. Craig Lindell, and today, let's talk about the mobility you need in order to perform your first pistol squat. Now, if you don't know what the pistol squat is, you are in for a real treat. This is a unique single leg squat variation that challenges dynamic balance, stability, quad strength, posterior chain strength, and you guessed it, your mobility. Before we dive into mobility exercises, to perform your first pistol squat, let's talk about the areas that you need to be mobile to allow you to perform this challenging movement. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. First area that needs mobility is going to be the ankle, and it needs mobility into a direction we call ankle dorsiflexion. What does this look like? As we lower down into that pistol squat, the knee has to progress forward over the toes while the heel should stay on the ground. This requires adequate motion at the tail curl joints in the front of the ankle. Without this ankle dorsiflexion motion, you're going to have a difficult time performing a pistol squat successfully without compensation or potential pain and discomfort due to putting unnecessary stress and strain on other joints, such as the patellofemoral joint, AKA your kneecap. Working up the kinetic chain, we have the tibial femoral joint as it is responsible for knee flexion. The average human being will have about 130 to 140 degrees of knee flexion range of motion with soft tissue structures like the quadriceps or the soft tissue mass of the hamstrings being the common limiting factor for more range, unless the knee has an injury history or current pathology. With that said, the pistol squat is going to challenge and demand full knee flexion range of motion under weight bearing conditions, which can be a challenging feat for your average individual. In addition to the tibial femoral joint, we will get an appreciation for tibial rotation range of motion in addition to tibial gliding as it relates to the pterocrural joint during the mobility section, which we'll cover in a bit. Without adequate knee flexion and tibial accessory motion, the pistol squat is going to be that much harder and likely less enjoyable. So stay tuned for some great mobility exercises to come. Lastly, the ball and socket hip joint, as well as appreciating the lumbopelvic motion that occurs during the pistol squat. A full range of motion pistol squat is going to be very demanding in this region. Specifically, the femur is going to have to move through its full range of motion in the acetabulum of the pelvis. In addition, the hip and core musculature are being asked to help stabilize the pelvis in all three planes of motion as the pelvis and the lumbar spine are going to tilt posteriorly as well as flex by the time you're at the bottom of the pistol squat. So we need this body region to work in harmony. Otherwise, we won't have a stable base to work with. Without a stable base, you could trigger compensation down the entire kinetic chain. Now that we understand a bit more about the specific joints and regions of the body, that need mobility in order to perform a pistol squat, let's dive into some excellent mobility exercise options to target each area if needed. Ankle dorsiflexion is up first. I want you to grab a sturdy chair or a box and follow along as I'll show you a really great exercise to mobilize your ankle specific to pistol squatting. I will be demonstrating the ankle dorsiflexion stretch contract relax exercise. Using this box, get one foot set up on the box in front of you as it makes it easier to perform this exercise. Next, you're going to move your knee directly over your toes while trying to keep your heel flat on the ground until you reach a point where you feel some resistance. At this point, I want you to stop. Now, you're going to focus on pushing your foot into the ground, like you're doing a heel raise. But we're going to perform this isometrically where nothing is moving. We're going to hold this for at least 10 seconds, then relax and then repeat the process of progressing your knee over your toes until you feel more resistance, then contract, then relax. I really like to do a set of at least three contracts and relaxes, take a break, and then repeat. With this exercise, we're hoping to achieve autogenic inhibition and stress relaxation of the gastroxoleus muscle complex to allow for more ankle dorsiflexion range of motion, which is going to make it easier to get your knees over your toes, which is gonna make it easier to pistol squat. Up next, knee flexion and tibial accessory motion. I want to review two different exercises. The first being mobility focused with less weight bearing demands. 
The second exercise will be more of a movement progression of how to improve tolerating loaded knee flexion. So first up, we have the lateral tibia glide. We're back to the box in a similar setup to the first ankle mobility exercise that we did. This is at first going to feel like another ankle exercise, which it is to an extent, but we're going to be a little bit more mindful and intentional at the knee joint as well. Using your hand on the same side as the foot that is on the box, you're going to maintain pressure and support in the front as well as the inside of your ankle to make sure it does not lift up or roll over. With your hand supporting your foot and ankle, you're going to focus on rotating your knee away from your hand so that your knee is outside the lateral aspect of your foot towards your pinky toe. From here, put as much pressure into the box you can by pushing down through your entire leg. This should add pressure to your knee. Then, while maintaining that pressure, progress your knee forward and away from your foot as far as you can while maintaining your heel flat on the ground. Return to the starting position and repeat. The lateral tibia glide exercise is an excellent mobility option to set you up for success with pistol squatting. The second exercise is more so a movement progression like I mentioned. How do you begin tolerating loaded knee flexion? Well, a great way to start with this is grab a wedge and follow along. Step one is can you even tolerate a goblet squat with your heels elevated on the wedge? Having the heels elevated gives our ankle joints more slack, making it much easier to move our knees over our toes, allowing us to load the knee joint. I want you to focus on range of motion. Remember, the pistol squat is not a shallow range of motion exercise. Once you achieve a deep goblet squat on both legs, progress to one leg. Now, focus on your balance, your eccentric control as you lower down, your transition point. Can you master holding that position? Can you hold that position with your other leg in front of you like a true pistol squat? Working through this progression is part of the building blocks to being able to successfully pistol squat. Last but not least, let's tackle hip mobility. Same thing, let's review two different exercises, one that is less weight bearing and the other one more. First up, we have a posterior hip mobilization in a quadruped position on our hands and knees. This may not look like it's that much weight bearing, but as we shift our weight back towards the target hip, the posterior lateral structures of that hip, including soft tissue and connective tissue, are going to take on some load. In addition to mobilizing muscles and connective tissue, the thought is this exercise is also going to target and have an influence on the posterior hip capsule. The hip and the shoulder share some commonalities. If we're dealing with pain in the front of the shoulder, we tend to target the posterior shoulder musculature and soft tissue with strength and mobility exercises. This is true for the hip as well. If you're dealing with pain or discomfort in the front of your hip with deep hip flexion, like you need to when you're pistol squatting, mobilizing the back of the hip can often provide relief. The next exercise is going to be a slow eccentric step down. Strength into length and concept. By performing a slow eccentric muscle contraction, working through your full range of motion, you're going to improve hip flexion range of motion and stability at end ranges, which is the best way to ensure long-term mobility gains. We talk a lot about this concept in our full body mobility program. How often should you do these mobility exercises? Great question. The key to successful mobility training is consistency, just like many other things in life. So we recommend trying to complete some version of these mobility exercises daily to get the most out of them if you're wanting to perform your first pistol squat. On top of mobility, you will also need the necessary strength to perform this movement. Thus, I challenge you to join me by signing up for the Prehab app and committing to the pistol squat program. We've organized a two week program with daily education and exercise that pairs the best mobility and strengthening exercises together to help you with pistol squatting with injury prevention in mind. I'm excited for this program myself because I've recently just completed my first Ironman event, signed the transition to some off-season training, and trust me, my body is in some desperate need of mobility and strength training to do anything other than just swimming, biking, and running. The best part is this program will be available for a limited time to all app members, as well as our premium members long-term. Until next time, Prehab, see ya. Hey, did you like this video? If you did, you should definitely check out the Prehab app. It includes all of our programs, a brand new workout library, and tons more videos like the one you saw today. Check it out by clicking on this link and get a free trial. Take control of your health today.